Okay, I've made this video of number 41 just so I can talk a little bit about the domain restrictions you're going to see on some of these problems when you're finding inverses. Overall, I'd say don't worry about that part too much. It's just the technicality that in order to have an inverse of function has to be one to one, which which is important, but right now the main thing is being able to find the formula for the function's inverse. So on 41 we have the function f of x equals the square root of 2 plus 5x. Okay, If we don't worry about the domain or anything and we just pay attention to our, our set of rules of how to find the inverse, we say that y equals the square root of 2 plus 5x, and we have to solve that for x. Okay, So I would square both sides, eliminating the square root on the right-hand side and getting y squared equals 2 plus 5x. Then I would subtract 2 from both sides, and then divide both sides by 5, and I wind up with y squared minus 2, all divided by 5, equals x. And then we swap x and y to get the inverse, so we get y equals, or the inverse equals, x squared minus 2 over 5. Okay, So there's the formula for the inverse. The only problem is that the original function square root is not defined everywhere because it's not defined for negative numbers and its inverse here x squared minus 2 divided by 5 is not 1 to 1 so it doesn't have a complete inverse without restricting the domain. Okay, Now one way to figure out how we would have to restrict the, restrict the domain of the inverse would be just to look at the graph. If you look at the graph, you'll see that the vertex is located at x equals 0, and so we're going to have to have x greater than or equal to 0 to have it be 1 to 1. We can also see that from the fact that the range of the original function will be the domain of its inverse, and vice versa. So on the original graph, we have that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2 fifths because the inside of the square root has to be greater than or equal to 0, as I have up here in the, in the top corner that the domain of f of x is where 2 plus 5x is greater than or equal to 0. If I solve that, x has to be greater than or equal to negative 5 halves. If I look at the inverse, that would be its range. The y values have to be greater than or equal to negative 2 fifths. I'm sorry, I said 5 halves a minute ago, 2 fifths. And if I scroll down here, I'll show how I use that to compute that x had to be greater than or equal to 0. If the y values of the inverse have to be greater than or equal to negative 2 fifths, I can set that up and replace the y there with the formula. x squared minus 2 divided by 5 has to be greater than or equal to negative 2 fifths. Solve that for x. I multiply both sides by 5 to get x squared minus 2 greater than or equal to negative 2. Add 2 to both sides. We get that x squared has to be greater than or equal to 0. And if you think about the graph of x squared, that happens whenever x is greater than or equal to 0. Okay. So just kind of a technicality. The most important thing I'm concerned with right now is that we get the inverse is x squared minus 2 divided by 5, but in order for that to be an inver completely invertible one-to-one -one function, we do have to have the x greater than or equal to 0 part.